first speaker. He's recently been appointed to the Beyond as a Beyond Blue Ambassador. He'll be speaking about his personal and family experiences in dealing with depression. Uh, he'll share a series of observations and learnings from a layman's perspective that are bite-sized and digestible in the past things. So I'd like to welcome Tony to the microphone. Thanks, Mike. Thank you, Rob. Thanks, Damien. Um, it would have been nice if we used to get crowds like this at the auctions uh, from my old career in real estate, but unfortunately, uh, yeah, the turnouts weren't quite as um, good as uh, what we've got tonight. And I, I suppose that's a bit of an indication about the importance of the issue. It's also um, uh, great to be um, uh, having a change of career and uh, getting involved in uh, such a worthwhile cause. So um, in the last um, uh, 12, 18 months or so, I've been uh, travelling around the country presenting Pretty similar to what you guys will be seeing tonight. Um, the first um, role was with another bank, they're not publicise them, Pat, who they were, but they, they flew me around and uh, uh, I spoke in all the various capital cities uh, around the country uh, to their state management teams and um, off the back of that I've been bouncing between doing corporate work and um, starting to do some uh, public uh, presentations like tonight. So uh, I'd also like to echo uh, Damien's initial welcome. So the uh, format for tonight will be, um, uh, as Damien mentioned, uh, I'll cover uh, what's up there on the screen and then um, the running sheet might change slightly because um, Stuff is not here but Anne is here so I'm suggesting that Anne might be our second speaker and um, uh, Stuff will speak when he gets here and then at the end of the evening an uh, important time is that we'll all be available for a panel or a question and answer session. So, if you think of any uh, questions throughout the presentation or you already may have preformed some questions, you're most welcome to um, take advantage of the panel of people who will be here tonight and uh, fire away and we'll see if we can help out with answers. So um, yeah, my story uh, to what I'm doing nowadays starts off uh, uh, one Sunday morning uh, going back a few years ago where uh, I was supposed to be working uh, in the old real estate game with um, my brother Mick. and. Um, I was getting um, organised and loading up my car and putting in all the uh, open for inspection signs and uh, I saw an ambulance go flying by and I, I thought you know, my immediate reaction was that some poor buggers had a heart attack but then uh, unfortunately I got a phone call about 15 minutes later uh, from one of my other brothers indicating that um, Mick had taken his life so um, it was a, obviously a, a shocking turn of events and um, even though we knew he was unwell, we obviously didn't know he was that unwell that he'd uh, go to the extent of um, taking his life. So it had uh, the immediate impact was pretty huge, obviously, where um, not only was it an impact on the immediate family, we were working a small business, business with about 15 staff members, so all of those people were, were touched by what happened. But then we also had the, um, uh, the further ripple effect of all of um, uh, Mick's family and friends, and then just people in the broader community who knew him and, and were touched in some way by what happened also. Uh, at Mick's funeral, uh, I was really touched by a very public statement that his wife made, um, which is along the lines of, if you could uh, in any way, shape or form help organisations like Beyond Blue, that would be tremendous because it would mean that other people uh, might have the benefit of not going through what our family went through. And that gave me an incredible point of focus and a, a, something positive to work towards because Obviously my emotions were all over the place at the time and uh, I was actually dealing with depression myself at the same time but um, I didn't feel it's appropriate or that I should talk about it and so what I'm kind of learnt now it's okay to talk about it, but at the time I just couldn't and um, I was lucky that I was actually seen a psychiatrist at the time and he uh, gave me some very good advice about how to cope with what had happened to Mick so one of the, uh, the points we'd like to make is don't be afraid to ask for help and there's nothing wrong with seeking uh, professional help, whether it's um, via your GP, someone like Anne, that's your first port of call, or someone more professional, or not, not more professional, Anne, uh, someone who's aligned uh, in terms of um, uh, a specific skill set that might be appropriate. So whether it's a psychologist, psychiatrist, counsellor, grief counsellor, whatever it might be. Um, so after a pretty um, a horrible start to uh, uh, an introduction to the uh, uh, wonderful world of depression, um, I got a bit fired up and a bit excited about what could potentially be done. And uh, one of the things that I took from the lead that Jenny gave me was Beyond Blue is all about increasing awareness and reducing stigma. So um, 
I was lucky enough to be in a position where I could have a chat to Frank Costa and I just said, look, I'd like to do something that would help in the area of fundraising and also um, uh, promoting awareness. So uh, Frank uh, was uh, really good about it. So uh, he said Geelong Football Club will support the idea of um, uh, my thought about having a Beyond Blue Cup to be played by Geelong against some other team. And the, uh, the obvious other target was um, Hawthorne, given that Jeff Kennett was the chair of Hawthorne and also the chair of Beyond Blue. <laughs> by the end of the meeting, um, he was uh, very receptive to the idea of Geelong and Hawthorne playing the idea of the Beyond Blue Cup and it actually got up the following year. So that's been played uh, ever since 2006. And I think Hawthorne won the first one or two games and Geelong has belted them ever since, so it's been great. <laughs> um, part of the idea though is that, uh, increasing awareness, so there's also a public forum associated every time uh, the game is run. It's no different to what we're doing tonight. We'll have a few speakers, uh, present some facts about the topic and the issue, and then uh, be available to take questions and answers. Um, we also, um, uh, a part of the, um, uh, the process at the time, we had a lot of people who wanted to do something to help mixed family, and uh, we organised a, um, a depression awareness evening where uh, Jeff was kind enough to come down and speak at, and um, we at the time, Beyond Blue had a policy of not really needing a lot of money. It was really well government funded. So uh, we thought we'd turn that into an opportunity to do a bit of fundraising for Mixed Family and raised um, a reasonable amount of money that went into a trust fund that helped put Mixed Kids through high school. So that gave the opportunity for a lot of um, people in the wider community just to do something to help the family because that was part of, I think, the healing after something like that happened where uh, how can we help, what can we do? And that was a tangible way that a lot of our friends and uh, associates helped. And as Damien mentioned earlier, um, uh, my relationship with Beyond Blue has just evolved recently into becoming one of their national ambassadors, and I've also been helping them to revise their ambassador program at the moment. So uh, it's been an interesting journey. Just some of the, I mentioned Barwon Health Foundation and Headspace down below uh, to give a bit of linkage to uh, the work that I'm doing in Geelong as chairman of Headspace, and we've just set up a foundation for Headspace also. I tried to map out and uh, make sense of that concept of the uh, midlife crisis and um, you can describe it as an actual process and uh, I have to say uh, personally uh, I reckon I sat in that period of chaos in the middle for about 10 years um, from um, the time of, um, uh, a bit before the time that uh, Mick died but um, probably for me the main driver were was being in the business, that I was over, tired, burnt out or something. I think I was in real estate for 25 years and in hindsight I probably should have been in for about 10 years. So um, it's, it's a the midlife crisis is something that will hit um, a lot of people. It comes out in a lot of different forms. Uh, it could be like me, I was a bit overworked and uh, evolved into having a, a, a few um, episodes and periods of depression. Uh, it could be related to a, a relationship breakup. Uh, it could be dealing with financial pressures, but whatever it is, it seems to be something that happens midlife. But the important thing is, it's something that can be fixed. It's something that you can get through. So whatever the issue is, there's always help there to um, help you get through it. A bit hard to see it yourself at the time, but the important thing is to reach out to others and they will help you get through it. Maybe a um, more simplified way of explaining it could be uh, uh, the smiley face there, where you see, um, uh, at this end of the spectrum when you're 25 it's all happening and um, you are young and silly and all that kind of stuff and then apparently it gets better when you get a bit older. Is that right Pat? Yeah, yeah, yeah pushing, pushing that out, no, not that far. But uh, in the middle for whatever reason it's a risk period. So um, I, I tried to illustrate a bit earlier with the, the, um, uh, the, um, the previous slide but um, it's just something that happens. So that we don't all totally understand what happens but if you know it's a risk period of time, you can be forewarned and forearmed and try and do something about it. And the most simple thing you can do is ask for help. I mentioned that uh, Jeff Kennett, one of the things that uh, resonated with me is this concept of, um, uh, he made a statement one day, it's okay to put yourself first. And that really goes against the grain when you're brought up to help others and support others. And particularly, I think if you're a male, um, that didn't sit comfortably. But the way he explained it was uh, from the point of view of, um, uh, work-life balance or uh, all the things you need to be accountable for and the simple explanation from him was um, he used to be asked what's the most important thing to you 
or to him, and his answer would be his wife, his kids, his family. But more recently, he's evolved into saying it's me because if I'm not firing on all cylinders myself, and I, uh, I won't be able to look after my relationships, I'll be neglecting my own health, I won't be worrying about holidays and other interests and um, uh, um, bucket list and all that kind of stuff. I'll probably take my, all, my eye off the ball of the finances. So um, yeah, it's something that I really um, advocate nowadays. It's okay to put yourself first to get yourself right and then you're in a better position to look after all your other goals and responsibilities. Uh, so based on Stouffer's philosophy of helping others in the concept of win-win, um, I've just uh, done a little table here just to give you a few ideas of um, some of the various things that you might get involved in. Uh, one of the uh, uh, options that you might consider, if you look at just the first one that says local and international, there's organisations like Rotary that help you get involved in things like that. Uh, you might want to do things on an individual basis or, or get involved in a group. It's really horses for courses. Whatever you want to do, just make sure that it's something that uh, you have a bit of a passion about. And um, just to explain that the last bit on the bottom where it's dollars or hours, uh, my suggestion is rather than just chuck a few bucks at something, you might put a few hours into something. That might be a bit more meaningful. 